the online. I'll give the word to you. Okay, thanks, Seba, and welcome everybody to this uh, to this uh, some user day of, of uh, 2020. Um, we had as an important goal for the year 2020 after releasing our updated uh, version of SAM, so SAM 2.0 in the beginning of the year. One of the important goals of this year was to do outreach and to build further on the community. And so next to an, a, a lot of conference talks that we have been giving or are still giving, uh, this SAM user day was an important event in, in the year to get together uh, and to, to discuss uh, how SAM is, is working for you. So welcome everybody. Uh, we're expecting quite a large audience, more than 250 people registered, which is, uh, which is great. And we hope that we can all share experiences and, and talk about how we can further use and improve on, on SAM. So welcome everybody. Okay, so first half hour, we wanna give an update on SAM. Uh, just to make sure that everybody is aligned, uh, there might be we see we see that people uh, there are some people with a lot of experience with SAM. There are also people that are starting using SAM. So we want to make sure that we all understand the same thing about what, what is SAM and what can we do with it. So that's uh, an idea on on uh, of the first talk of of, of of this user day. So first of all, what is SAM? Uh, most people will know, but the idea of SAM is, of course, to have a maturity model for software security that allows you to measure and to improve, to improve your software security practices within your organization. Uh, it's, our, it's our mission. It has been our mission for the past, the past uh, uh, decade. Uh, but we've broadened that a bit in the sense that it's definitely not only about software development, but it's the entire software lifecycle. So including acquisition uh, or, or whatever you want to uh, perform in your software lifecycle. And it's also meant to be technology and process agnostic, which is very important. So we don't focus on uh, waterfall development only. By all means, it's, it's meant for agile development, DevOps development and others. And we have some talks today or some... Uh, uh, discussions today that will also uh, go into more detail about that. Um, so it's an OWASP project. It's a flagship project. That it means that it's a mature project. It has been a flagship project for the for the past couple of years, and we continue to uh, to, to 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 maintain status of a flagship project as much as we as much as we can. Okay, we have a, a website. Uh, it's a, it's a brand new website. It has been uh, released also in the beginning of this year. Um, it's, uh, it's a website that we hope uh, suits you well. It's, it's much more uh, live, active and interactive than it used to be before. And, and so we have uh, quite some people spending a lot of time on making that website very uh, accessible to you all. Uh, one important thing there is the URL of the website because still we see that it's a bit of confusing, but the correct URL of our website and the main website for our project is oasm.org. So if you wanna stay updated on all the news and the updates, please uh, make sure that you also uh, go from time to time to this website and follow our honor, our honor channels that uh, Seba will come, uh, come back to in, uh, in the, later in this talk. Um, so for the for SAM2, we had a number of uh, important goals that we set ourselves as, as a working team. Uh, and I just want to reiterate, reiterate on that to make sure what's, what's the, the biggest change that we wanted to achieve. Uh, a, a very important goal was to, to align with recent development practices because we saw uh, that people were using OpenSAM quite often for waterfall projects, waterfall-based development, but it was kind of yeah, uh, hitting, hitting its limits in terms of other modern uh, development practices like uh, Agile or DevOps. So we wanted to bring it uh, more uh, aligned with those modern develop type of development practices. That was a first important one. A second one, we really wanted to go through the entire model to revise all the activities and to make sure that they still make sense because uh, as you as you as you might know the original sum model was uh, um, uh, implemented or, or released in 2009 so it's more than 10 years old we want to make we wanted to make sure that all activities still make sense and that that they all have their own place and important place uh, in, in the model so we revisited all the activities throughout the entire model it was quite a big effort uh, we made sure it was pro, pro, uh, method agnostic. I already explained that. So making sure that it also supports agile and DevOps and other types of developments. Uh, we really wanted to work on the assessments the, or the assessment model that is being used in SAM2. And I'll come back to that also uh, later in this talk. 
uh, but, but we really felt that improvement was needed there. And very importantly, we also want to improve the production process because in versions 1.x of the model, a lot of uh, manual uh, intervention or interact, uh, work was needed to do an update of the model. And we really uh, invested a lot of time in doing that for versions 1.2, 1.5. Uh, but we want to improve that production process to make sure that we can we, we, we got, a, got a more efficient way of working. So that was also, we spent also a lot of time there to, to work on that. And you will see uh, some, of the, uh, some of these also later in this talk. Very importantly, backwards compatibility was not a goal for some two, and you will also see in a model that's that, not, that that is not the case. So the activities and the and the and the security practices do not really align always to what was there uh, before that, uh, and it was explicitly a choice uh, which we which we felt was important to make to make the model uh, a, a modern and and a applicable model to be used by by all of you. Right, the core structure of, of OpenSAM for those that you are maybe less familiar with the model. So it's it's centered around five business functions, uh, governance, design, implementation, verification operations. And these business functions are typically aligned to roles that you typically would expect in an organization. So every organization, when you're dealing with software, there will be some activity ongoing on, around design or testing of software or maintaining, operating and maintaining the software. So however you are organized, these roles typically would resonate in your organization. Then under these business functions, under these five business functions, you see uh, typically three uh, security practices. So for instance, for governance, there would be strategy and metrics, policy and compliance, and education and guidance. And every business function has these three security practices. And then under these three security practices, there uh, comes more information in terms of activities and how you can measure. But the overall core structure of SAM is like that. So you have five business functions and three security practice under, under each function. Maybe going a bit more into detail about what has changed uh, re, uh, compared to the other, um, to the other, uh, to the previous model. Um, we, uh, as, you, as you can see, for instance, the implementation security practice is totally new. It was not there before. Uh, and it was definitely, uh, we felt it important to do uh, maturity scoring on secure building and secure deployment, for instance. Um, so, and, and it was, we felt it was necessary to, to improve, uh, to, to include a new security uh, business function for that. Uh, we kind of, we uh, much revisited the verification business function. We basically rebuilt how, uh, how to measure uh, maturity according to the different uh, security practices in verification. Um, and we also re restructured the way the operations business function was done. So quite some structural changes in there, um, which actually make it, make it less, uh, less backward compatible, that's, that's for sure. Okay, maybe a bit more information on some of the, the more detailed uh, elements behind the structure. So first of all, if you look at a security practice in itself, so one block, you see that every security practice has these, has these three levels, and these are actually the levels of, of maturity. And uh, so level one, meaning you, you would expect an opportunistic implementation of a particular uh, objective, like uh, doing abuse testing, uh, doing something around abuse testing is level one. Level two is that you would uh, make it in a more structured way, implement it in a more structured way and making sure that it's application specific. So it's a focusing on application specific risks. And level three is really more advanced implementation, making sure that you uh, do uh, feedback loops to continuously improve on that and, and, uh, and continuously uh, update uh, your, your activities basically. So you have these three levels of maturity. Uh, and they apply to all the, the different security practices uh, un underneath. That's how the, 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 the more like the detailed uh, model look like. Um, so I explained the levels of maturity. Uh, these are the three levels. Um, what is also important is the concept of streams. And that's something that we introduced in version two. And that's sometimes a bit, a bit confusing for people. But we really wanted to make sure that throughout the model, there are no activities, that, that there's a logical ordering uh, between all the activities uh, between uh, gathered around a particular topic. So for instance, for control verification, you would expect something 
uh, to be happening at level one, two, and three. And to really force ourselves into thinking about that, we uh, introduced the notions of streams. And so for every security practice, you would have an A stream and a B stream, and every stream would contain an activity at each level. That was a way for us to make sure that we are structurally sound. Now, there is important to note that there is no real relationship between the A and B stream, meaning that it's not necessary to execute the A stream before the B stream or the other way around. There's no ordering or structuring between two streams. It's just a way to make sure that we're structurally sound. And sometimes that's a bit misconfusing, uh, confusing to people. So hence, hence uh, a bit of explanation around that. All right. Um, I also mentioned that we were looking into the assessments and improving the assessments in some version two. What, 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 what changed there quite significantly is that we, in the previous models of SAM, we really focused on uh, measuring the coverage of an activity. So saying, so in term, for the example, for instance, of create and promote a strategy, saying which are you creating strategy and to what extent is it shared within the company, for instance. So you, you would measuring, you would be measuring the coverage of an activity. Now in version two, we really also wanted to work on how well are you doing, are you implementing an activity? And we had long debates on how to best represent it and make sure that you can also measure the quality of implementation in the model. Uh, what, we, what, what we decided to do in version two is to work with these um, like prerequisites uh, that, you have see, that you have here uh, in, the, in the screen, like on these bullets. So if you would be measuring uh, the create and promote level one activity, so have you have a, do you have a, a defined set of risks to prioritize applications? Um, what we see, we, we have this, are the prerequisites saying that, for instance, okay, we expect if you score uh, a yes on this activity, we, we would expect that the organization leadership, for instance, has vetted uh, and approved these risks. So these are prerequisites that need to hold before you can actually measure, actually measure uh, the activity as, as successful. So that's how we combined measuring equality and coverage in the SAM 2.0 model. And it's important to understand that it's like an, an, a new way of, of measuring uh, the, the maturity of an, in, within an organization. Okay, so we've talked about measuring. There's also a possibility to do road mapping in SAM. And so the SAM toolbox, uh, which is actually uh, an Excel tool that you can download. And there's also some uh, on online applications for that. It allows you to measure, but you can also define a roadmap in different stages uh, to improve the situation of software security in the organization. And so what you can do is for different phases, you can say, okay, in phase, uh, one, for instance, I want to uh, improve the security requirements, while in phase two, I want to really work on the threat assessment and, and, and yeah, really define a plan around that. So the toolbox gives you a way to really define your objective in the organization and how you can build a roadmap around that. And you have these nice diagrams that can help you support making the arguments within the organization and discuss around that. So that's all part of the toolbox, box, which is really available for you to, to work with in the organization. Okay, um, that was a bit explanation about where we came from, structure of the model. Uh, now Seba is going to share you a bit more uh, uh, of, the, of the, 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 the way we changed our operations and how we actually improved our way of working for the, for the project. So Seba? Okay. Yes, thank you very much, Bart. And thanks for that uh, introduction. So uh, from me also uh, a kind welcome uh, for everyone who uh, joined in the meantime. For information, we are sharing this also on YouTube Live. Uh, it's streamed. Please share your questions on either YouTube, uh, this chat uh, function here in Zoom webinar, or also on our Slack channel. And then we'll uh, use those questions by the end of this talk and each, at the end of each talk to uh, select a couple of questions and do the Q&A. So to continue on what uh, Bart was explaining, one of the main challenges we also had was with the development of, uh, of some was to rethink and restructure our collaboration model on creating the, the, the project outcome at uh, the advice. So what we, because we're not doing this alone, it's not Bart and myself, and there is a whole group of people who have contributed and are still contributing to some. And the way we've actually, uh, after quite a lot of, I would say, trial and errors, developed now uh, some is that all the source of some is in GitHub. So everything we do is uh, first of all, 
uh, managed and contributed to uh, in our GitHub repository. And this, the, the source of the model itself are actually YAML files. So for every activity, for every stream, for every question, for every answer, they're individual YAML files. And whenever someone within the core team, after a review, a proper review, and then check in our, I would say, staging environment, uh, has committed and merged uh, the new YAML files to the GitHub repository, together with also markdown files for the website, it's automatically being checked Markdown is being generated to a Hugo-based uh, website, and then is being built and deployed to our uh, GitHub-based OWASP.org. And that has helped us enormously to collaborate on the content and, uh, and the project itself. And that has proven to be like really the accelerator for uh, for really being us being able to deploy OWASP SAM version 2.0, but also will help us to, in a more, I would say, granular and agile way, uh, work on next versions of, uh, of SAM. So, and this is really the basics and our own, I would say, CI, CD pipeline to create our content. So obviously we'll be publishing to the website, but we'll also be creating documents. We'll be, uh, the toolbox, which we've created, is automatically generated out of the YAML files. Uh, also application scan, and we'll be using the YAML files as a source and so on. So if you go to the next slide, we'll see that it's really important that this not only restricts it to, I would say, the core contributors of the, the project itself, and, and hence we're very happy with this kind of very successful user day and, and your participation, because what we're really looking for is to involve you and everyone who uses some, because this is an open source project, uh, so that we can use and reuse your community feedback, your proper feedback into uh, the next versions and the next releases of the of the model. So we have the core structure, uh, which some uh, which uh, Bart explains. We have the evaluation model. We have activity model, which will definitely, as from a project base, will continue to evolve and to improve. But what we're also adding is extra aspects like guidance uh, and not the next, but in the next two sessions, um, uh, there will be a session about uh, guidance, agile guidance from Rob van der Veer, who will explain that. But there's also other tools, like uh, there's Ashish, Ashish, who will be explaining and demonstrating one of the tools. So there's a lot of other tools and guidance and documents around some that are uh, community driven, that come from people who work on a daily basis uh, with some and that donate their work back to uh, to some and that we want to share uh, also uh, obviously together uh, with you and, and use some more as a, as a platform to share that that knowledge and to uh, I would say distribute that knowledge. So if you go uh, to the next slide we'll see uh, that one of the things that we've also been working on is not only the English version, the, the, the basic sum is in UK English actually, but we'll also are already have started and people already have started on translating uh, content uh, into the next, into German, into uh, Turkish. These, these are a couple of, uh, I would say, uh, pilot projects. But the idea is that in the past, we already had version translations of uh, some version 1.0 that now certainly with the more agile way of reproducing and deploying the content on the website that will also be able to uh, deploy new languages uh, on the uh, on the OWASP-SAM.org and also documents on the that are translated in different languages. We're using the crowding platform for that. Uh, and then uh, based on that, we'll be able to create and maintain new uh, new versions and new languages. So if you go to the next slide, indeed, is how that is, that is one, I would say, aspect of translations. The next thing, and that's really one of the questions I've gotten the most, and I would probably see, uh, expect that most of you have, have this kind of urge. So we have now used some for our own maturity um, improvement, but how do I compare to my peers, how do how does this our development team compare with the development team of a similar kind of organization? And that is really one of the things that we've been focusing on for the last couple of years, and where Brian Brian Glass will also be doing um, a workshop on by the end of um, of the user day today. And that is the Sun Benchmarking Initiative. The Sun Benchmarking Initiative, the objective there is to gather enough 
and crowdsource enough data on the usage of SAM so that once we have enough momentum and enough data as a, as a baseline, that once we do a new assessment, that we can start comparing with other people's assessments. And that's where the, the benchmarking initiative uh, will add that extra value besides the SAM model itself, that you can also start comparing with others uh, that have done the same thing as you are doing. And that and, and maybe over time, you can also start comparing implementations of some and look at what works, what doesn't work in a similar kind of organization or a similar kind of sector, uh, if you want. So and there's a, a full workshop um, on that by the end of this some user day. So stick around uh, for that one. Uh, Brian will be handling that one. Which brings us uh, to the roadmap. So we've already explained a lot of things that we're doing. We're now based on the fact that we can continuously deploy uh, new releases and new versions. We are continuously fixing uh, and still fixing some small stuff, typos, uh, some small aspects that were not really completely uh, correct. Um, absolutely no, no big changes, but there's some minor fixes on the online version. We're also wrapping up uh, the, uh, the the project or a, or a, uh, like the track that we also can create automatically a PDF version because people still like to download the full model in a PDF document. And then for the next kind of releases, for the next releases, the minor releases in October, we'll be focusing on translations, but also adding mappings so that you can compare, uh, like you can map ASVS to um, to some, you can map uh, BSIM to some or other models to some. So that's for uh, within a couple of months. By the beginning of next year, we aim in version 2.2 to add more specific activity-based guidance, uh, like what Rob has already started for Agile, but we're going to add DevOps-style guidance, add references from different activities to other projects within OWASP or outside of OWASP, so to help people to implement uh, these activities. And then by middle of next year, we we're really hoping, hoping to have an online toolbox. Currently, you have to download the toolbox in a, in a spreadsheet and do self-assessments or create the roadmaps, but having an online version and also making an open API available for tools to use and reuse the, the data model. And from there, we can obviously evolve how we, how we want it, but it's not only how we want it, really expect and hope that you can share your expectations uh, back to us and that we can together evolve some version towards later versions and even in version 3.0. So the, the key question here is, is really for you. So um, make use of this some user day to understand uh, how, how what we've done so far. Um, but also, we really hope that you can provide us with feedback, share your uh, what has worked, share what has not worked, um, not only here, but also through our Slack channel, through other means, through other channels. Uh, so this is really a, a collaborative effort. And I, I, we have been very lucky to have a full team working on this, but we're also counting on you uh, to co-create the next releases of, uh, of some together. So. To give you a little bit of an idea who has already worked on uh, on the sum itself so and this is by no means an i would say an exhaustive list uh, but it's really people from all around the world uh, incidentally bart and i are, are both from belgium but there's people from asia from uh, from even new zealand from south america from the uk from the us who really collaborate on uh, on some itself uh, as a product so really thankful for uh, for your contributions and uh, obviously we can't do this alone uh, bart and i uh, and so we are really help and glad that uh, that you've been doing this and i think uh, the fact that we have this kind of attention is really um, a really nice point in time uh, that we can uh, show gratitude to the people who have done this, uh, but that we can also work together on the on the next release. So it's not only, uh, I would say, people who are donating their time, they also have uh, uh, core contributors and uh, sponsors to some, because we, we pay for technical editing, we pay for graphical support, we pay for marketing support. Uh, so 
if uh, if you want to help us through sponsoring you're more than welcome the link is there but we want to thank uh, the organizations the uh, the companies that have donated uh, money to the project it helps us to organize these kind of events and other events where we also uh, meet face to face so uh, some would not have been in version 2.0 without that so enjoy uh, the user day um, uh, really the this is uh, this is for you we've uh, we've had we were very lucky that a lot of people have uh, sent in really interesting topics there is a great lineup of topics in terms of presentations uh, roundtables workshops so um, make full use of this and I really hope uh, to have your feedback and uh, and I hope you will enjoy the rest of the user day that's it in terms of slides for uh, for this first talk um, in terms of being involved, um, obviously we have the website, the GitHub. Really, please also make sure to uh, connect to Slack. Uh, there's a project Sam uh, on Slack um, to be, I would say, updated. There's a newsletter. Follow us on Twitter, and also if now created our YouTube channel, so we'll be sharing what we uh, what we have during the user day here, but we'll also be sharing videos uh, later on. Okay, so that uh, really wraps up the first talk of um, of today. And we'll probably have a couple of questions. Nassim. Well, um, Seba, one question that did come up was whether uh, a practical one, whether slides would be shared um, after the talks. Yes, yes, definitely. So um, all the speakers have uh, shared their slides and the materials with us. And we'll be sharing all the individual slides uh, later after, probably uh, just after this user day today. Uh, and we'll make them linkable through the through the website. Okay, perfect. Otherwise, so far, people are, uh, I think, uh, starting off fairly shyly and uh, <laughs> waiting to see what others say. So it's uh, it's fairly quiet on the question front, which may also just mean that you've been uh, you've prepared a very good presentation. Everything is very clear. Okay, thank you.